Playmaker, I will defeat you to avenge my dead Ignis brethren, who I have represented in this diorama featuring various flavors of White Claw. There's four there. Oh yeah, and me. That's five. I got thirsty on the way over here. That's crazy, man. Dude, you're drinking my- that is the representation of my dead friend! Oops. Come on! You wanna make out? Okay. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. In celebration of the final episode of Vrains, and wow, what an ending. I mean, who could have expected I to have a fully formed prehensile penis? Uh, we're playing his namesake deck. Call up your local hackerman. It's time to take a look at Ignister. So here's the list. Ah, there is not much more beautiful to a double-digit IQ deck constructor like me than a list that builds itself. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Ignister is the archetype of the lovable and delightful scamp and pal to playmaker, I, who decides to wage an unstoppable war against the human race for almost no reason at the beginning of Season 3 of Vrains. The ultimate culmination of the Cybers tribe, this archetype has monsters that span the entirety of the typing wheel and list of summoning methods, with the exception of the completely disowned Pendulum. Their field spell, Ignister Island, allows you to special summon every individual Ignister from your hand once, provided you've got no monsters in your main monster zone. By repeatedly summoning your Ignisters via the effect of Ignister Dark Templar, the corrupted version of Decode Talker, you're able to cycle through specific board wipes on a stick until you eventually OTK your opponent with an onslaught of overpowered oddities. Of course, no anime deck would be complete without a crippling, unresolvable weakness, and Ignister is no exception. It's got two massive issues. Firstly, it absolutely must find either its field spell or Ignister Picari, which searches it. And secondly, it can't go first. It's shocking that in this day and age, archetypes are making it to the printer without the ability to build a board, but somehow, it has happened again. Unlike other decks unable to engineer LP setups, however, Ignister's ability to destroy daunting dinguses and blow through back row is nearly unmatched, so deck building is going to be a matter of ensuring we have the tools to push through early choke points and the redundancy to find our explosive opens every game. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Ignisters. Three Hiari, which adds an Ignister spell on summon and can turn a fellow Nister's level to four to enable its associated Xyz monster. Three Doyon, who reincarnates on summon and adds a spell back to hand when used as Link material, usually for his associated Link monster. Three Baruru, who foolishes on summon and reborns a Synchro material when used to summon his associated Synchro monster. Three Achichi, who searches on summon and can blow up your own monster if it performs a battle? Look, it makes sense for his associated Link monster. Three Doshin, who self-specials and searches the fusion spell for his associated fusion monster. And three Hiari, who can self-special and search her associated ritual monster, Water Leviathan. Finally, we've got a Lady Debug and three Ash Blossom. For spells, we're on three Island, critical to literally all of our plays. Three Idol Reborn, which reborns an Ignister but locks you into Cybers for the turn. One I Love Yujin, semi-super poly. One Eyes Ritual, to summon our Water Leviathan, three Cyanet Mining to find the right Rugrats at the right time, a Terraforming, two Called, and three Impermanence. In the extra deck, we've got Earth Golem, Quantum Dragon, Wind Pegasus, who pops spells and traps, Light Dragon, who pops monsters, big bosses of Dark Fluid, Avramax, and Liger, Link 3s of Transcode, Dark Templar, who reborns Ignisters at link points when one is specialed, and specials an Ignister when he attacks, Nightmare Phoenix, and two Lingaribo, an Ignister main monster clear and trap negator. So with that, let's jump into the games. Call me Kirby, because our first match is up against DDD. This game showcases not only an intrinsic strength of our deck, but also what you have to do if you're forced to go first. Our opponent hasn't opened any interaction, far from it, they have three copies of Savant Kepler, so we have full permission to pop off as hard as possible. Unfortunately, there's not far to pop when all of our cards are predicated on the fact that our opponent's going to control some of their own. We'll do our best regardless, we'll lead with a copy of Cyanet Mining, that's going to add a copy of Picari to our hand, who will normal summon to get a copy of Ignister Island. We'll then set the field spell and link summon a Linkaribo, use the effect of Island to special summon a Doyen, and add that copy of Baruru back to our hand. We're going to Idle Reborn the Picari to link summon a copy of Dark Templar, then we'll special summon a copy of Baruru 
Guru from hand, triggering both its effect and the effect of Dark Templar. We'll special summon the Hiari we just sent and a Picari so we can synchro summon a copy of Pegasus and then bring back Picari and overlay for Light Dragon. It's not a perfect board, but it's pretty good. Of course, our Light Dragon is a bit of protection, though none of our monsters have quick effects. We'll ash this Kepler. I don't want them adding a copy of Swamp King should they already have the Dark Contract with the Gate, which of course they do. They'll Swirl Slime for a High Genghis, then they'll use the second effect to bring out Ghost. They're going to bring back Savant Thomas before synchro summoning a Bright Armageddon. Usually a powerful boss, it protects against targeted removal, but as they're about to find out, our Light Dragon does not target. So it's time for game two, and oh my god, we found Dinosaur. Look, dear viewer, at the future OTK decks want. Both players desperately trying to lose the die roll, but unfortunately for our opponent, we're just a little bit more of a loser. They're going first, and their hand of Shadal Fusion, Pankratops, and Dark Ruler No More is looking pretty sparse. This game showcases just how available our OTK is. They're going to lead with a copy of Fossil Dig, adding a soul-eating over after to hand, which they'll normal summon to send a copy of Coddles to Graveyard, adding a double Evo pill to hand afterwards. They'll pass it back to us, and let's get to work. We'll lead with a copy of Sinet Mining, adding a copy of Chi Chi to hand, before normal summoning a Picari using the effect to get a copy of Island, Link summoning a Lingaribo, then specialing that a Chi Chi to get a copy of Doshin. We'll special the Doshin to Link summon a copy of Dark Templar, we'll then special Baruru, triggering both Dark Templar's effect and Baruru's through a hand trap, mind you, specialing a Hiari and a Picari so we can synchro summon a Wind Pegasus, reborn the Picari use its effect to overlay into a Light Dragon and eat our opponent's Overraptor. In the battle phase, we'll attack twice for 2300 before activating the Grave Effect of Lingaribo, getting in for 300, then activating Light Dragon's effect to Reborn Templar for lethal damage. So, it's time for game 3, and you know what that means, a best of 3 versus meta. Our opponent's playing Orcist, and this will be the true test of our deck's ability to go second. Orcist is not only one of the most adept decks in the metagame at setting up turn 1 boards, but it's incredibly repeatable, meaning that our opponent will make the same turn 1 play over and over again if we don't close out the game quickly. They're going first, of course, so they'll lead with a copy of Nightmare Corruptor Ebly, which is going to be a big problem for us, the individual with a copy of Infinite Impermanence in hand. We'll go ahead and fire it on the mermaid before it's useless, even though they discarded a copy of Orcist Nightmare. They'll then activate Orcist Nightmare's effect and Harp Horus to get a copy of Symbol Skeleton before Link Summoning Galatee, using her effect to fetch a Climax and passing it back to us. Okay, we should be able to do something here. We'll lead with a Link Summoned copy of Lingaribo, and then we'll activate the effect of Ignister Island, fetching a Ghost Ogre from our opponent. That's okay, we have a Picari for a second one. We'll then Link Summon a copy of Phoenix to prompt the Climax, they'll activate it in response of course, allowing us to use Island's effect to Special Summon a copy of Achichi, adding a copy of Hiari to hand, activating Idol Reborn to get back Picari, Specialing Hiari, and Link Summoning Dark Templar. We'll go to Battle Phase and trigger the effect of Dark Templar, bringing back this copy of Picari so we can bring back both Hiari and Achichi, and getting in for, what, a meager amount of damage? In main phase 2, we'll activate the effect of Picari to make our copy of Achichi a level 4, so we can Xe summon a Light Dragon, ending on a Lingaribo for any lingering traps. I'm feeling pretty good until I remember why Orcist is a tier 1 deck. They're going to go ahead and bring back Galatee and then activate Babel, normal summon a copy of Harp Horror, and oh shoot, all of our monsters are linked. Okay, they're going to shuffle back our copy of Dark Templar and then, ugh eat our copy of Ignister Island. They'll attack into our copy of Light Dragon. Unfortunately, he only protects from effects. They'll then special summon a copy of Gizmek. Ooh, and this is about the end of the game. Let's see what we draw for turn. Oh, perfect. Well, we'll activate the Grave Effect of Island, special summon a copy of Doshin, and concede. So, it's time for game two, and ooh, our hand is hard to evaluate. We have a copy of Cyanide Mining, but should that fetch an Ash, I think we are going to lose. We've got a couple of hand traps as well, so we shouldn't have to contend with Climax this game. Our opponent's going to start by special summoning a copy of Vishutta, before normal summoning a copy of Mathematician, setting a copy of Harpoor to get a copy of Orcus Nightmare, and Link summoning a Galatee. When they go to activate the effect, we will Infinite Impermanence, no negation this time. Afterwards, we're going to Link summon a copy of Longarisu, activate Nightmare's effect, setting a copy of Symbol Skeleton, then using Symbol Skeleton to get Galatee and Dingarisu attaching the skeleton. Who Ooh, that is some setup. Okay, we draw a copy of Ritual for turn. Fantastic. We'll sign it mining away our remaining copy of Infinite Impermanence and activate Picari's effect. We'll activate Island, Link Summon to Link Rebo, then activate Island's effect, fetching a Twin Twister. Ooh, 10 quadrillion IQ! In order to float it, we have to banish our remaining Ignister from Graveyard, turning our Doyon off, and sealing our fate. So, we're back with the deck, and... Huh. Starting to see why Vrains ended the way it did. Prehensile penis and all. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One... It is exceptionally adept at cracking boards. The fact that its main setup combo includes the equivalent of a Harpy's Feather Duster and a Raigeki means that neither stun nor seven negate boards are safe. 
Two, it's got a ton of ways to get the island. Sure, the reliance on the field spell is unfortunate, but the built-in recursion and the availability of cyber searchers means that games without the windmill are few and far between. And three, the OTK is remarkably consistent. Light Dragon's Reborn effect is almost always online, and when coupled with Lingaribo, almost always represents at least 2300 points of excess damage. And the cons. One, it's fragile. While it's got a multitude of ways to find Island, they all revolve around resolving a monster effect. Since you're aiming to go second, it's unlikely you're going to be able to jam one through a competent opponent. Two, it needs a ton of material to go off. You need not only the correct monster in hand, but also a host of two to three extenders in order to make anything relevant more than once in a blue moon. And three, it really, really lacks the ability to go first. While the consistent turn 1 opening of the Pegasus, Templar, and Dragon looks cool, wow, look at all the pretty colors, it does next to nothing, and any meta deck will gladly accept the free license to run you over or out of resources. All in all, it's an exciting deck with a unique playstyle and an interesting monster lore, but in the face of any of the current meta contenders or the trend to smash as many negates on board as possible, you're more likely to end up like Blue Angel than you are to end up like Playmaker. So that's that. While I appreciate all of my viewers, a special thanks to my patrons, especially Crispy, Sir Tachyon, Utterly J, Distrin, Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Second, Lieutenant Labcoat, Fiore, Meepmoto27, Burrito Man93, Adrian Bra, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, Donnie Fillerup, and Mika Reichman. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash mbtygo every Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.